Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here, Hotel Chronicles. I'm in Atlanta for the singles workshop tonight and the life coach certification tomorrow. It's sold out, so sorry if you missed it. Catch the next life coach certification in Atlanta. I come through Atlanta every so often, probably once a month to do a, a training. But I want to pop in, got a question um, yesterday. And the young lady, she said, Tony, it's a lot of men who are lazy and they want the woman to do all the work. And I recently heard that from another young lady. She said, Tony, this guy, he wasn't really pursuing me. And then he told me it's a two way street and that I could have you know, reached out to him, too. And today that is happening more and more often and when the one lady when she said tony this a lot of guys doing this in my in my mind i was like man you got to be lying you know you got to be kidding me that it's a lot of men that want you to approach them and i wanted to ask her so out of the last 10 men you didn't talk to how many of them wanted you to pursue them not not approach them i mean pursue them like you kind of lead the chase but I didn't ask her and because it's hard for me to believe that that's how most men are but I'm not dating men so a woman would know better than me on that but let me help you understand this because I am a man now today we got the swipe right swipe left community meaning with all of these dating apps it's a whole lot of swiping going on and it was a lady not too long ago you know got loud with me about the dating apps and she was oh today it is so many people meeting online why would you say something wrong with online dating and the reason why i say that is because it is not real it's just not real like a serial killer could walk up to you at the gas station, at the grocery store, wherever. But at least you get to see his real face. You get to feel his energy. You get to feel his vibe. You get to see if he follow you to your car. It's a lot more advantages to meeting somebody in person than when you meet them on a dating app. Because when you meet them on a dating app, it could be a fake picture. Y'all could be on the phone talking. Their phone could conveniently not have FaceTime. Conveniently don't trust, you know, the government so they ain't got Skype. I just want to hear your voice. You hear my voice. This is what a real connection is. And I'm so tired of meeting all of these women who everything is based on looks. That's so shallow. So now you talking to somebody on the other side of the world or living in their mama basement and you ain't got a clue because y'all just talking on the phone because y'all met on online on a dating app and meeting on a dating app is different than meeting just online. Now see, now y'all told me Facebook got a dating app now and that's going to be terrible for them. And you, I, I used to have an auntie, and she'll go into a store. We we live in the South, so we have Publix grocery stores. Publix is like the Rolls Royce of grocery stores. So you go in there, smell good, and Publix subs, that Publix deli. My auntie will go in Publix and catch her a fall. She'll go in Publix and catch her a fall. She'll, there ain't no puddle of water. She just... Hit, hit her head. Oh my goodness. Oh, my neck and my back. Oh, my neck and my back. And then get her a lawyer. On, get her a slip and fall lawyer. And then get her a $10,000 settlement. Now, what happened is they actually just gave her half of it and then started watching the investigating. She never saw that other half and probably went to collection for the first half, but that story never was told. And so. This what's gonna happen to Facebook. Somebody gonna get on there on that dating app and just 
catch them a fall and be in there suing them. Be in there suing Facebook for their day now because cause they know Facebook got the bag. Now, and it probably has happened with every other dating site too, but they're not going to publicize that when they got to do this settlement and for their system that they done created. But on American Greed that come on CNBC, there's a whole entire American Greed about a man who... I think he got six million or sixteen million from y'all women online dating y'all women, and you know to the women he looked like a glass of chocolate milk, you know, and they thought he was you know he's tall, he was muscular, used to play sports, and he started dating women that was like a man like him would never even look in these women' direction. So now they talking to this man, they swiping credit cards. I mean, these women was on there talking about, yeah, I gave them 6000 I gave them 8000 and it just kept going, another 2000 another 3000 And then they show him, you know, he in the club popping bottles, you know, he wearing diamond jewelry, he driving luxury cars, all at your expense. And then, and here's the thing, this why it catch you off guard is because you looking for love. So you just don't go around thinking everybody you meet is a bad person. So you giving this person the benefit of the doubt. The next thing you know, a mama done slipped and fell. She need a hip replacement, but she don't have insurance and the co-pay $2,000. And you sitting on a savings account, sitting on a 401k. Y'all have been talking an hour a day for the last 36 days. So you say, I'll loan you the 2k. He get your 2K, but what you don't realize, you talk to him for 30 minutes to an hour a day. Sometimes every other day. He he don't have a job. He living off women. So he got 24 hours around that clock, and he working. You hear me? He's working. He on that phone line. So he got your two, and then he go get him 10 other two. So now in one week, he done made him $20,000. That is the hustle. That's the whole job. I talked to a guy. I remember when I used to work for somebody. Uh, I used to work for somebody until I was 27. I retired at 27 and been working for myself ever since, which I can't really consider what I do real work. I'm living my purpose. But when I was on somebody's job, it one of my coworkers told me, now he was from the island. He was from the island. Uh, you, I can't remember what island he was from. He was from an island. Now, this was a black brother, and he told me his homeboys from his island live up in Virginia, and they full-time career is whispering sweet nothings to, to women on dating sites and getting money. And he said they raking in the dough. He said they making six figures off of fake love scams on online dating. And, and everybody got all the sense, okay? Every woman I talk to have all the sense. Got all the sense in the world. Oh, well, Tony, look, look, look me in the eyes. Do I look like a fool? Do you think that I'm going to give a man some money? Absolutely not. And then two months later, pocketbook open, and you pouring out all kind of money because he done said everything you needed to hear. Y'all talking nonstop. Some of these men will even show you your face, show you their face. Some of these men go on dates with you, okay? So that is the culture. That's what I want you to understand. That's the culture today. Stay off them online dating sites. You hear me? Until I create mine. And when I make mine one day, I'll probably never make one. But if I do, it's going to have some some foolproof in there. It's going to have some foolproof in there. And to get them clowns up out of there. You hear me? And it's going to cost too. It ain't going to be no, nothing free. So if you come on there, you, you're serious about dating. But these sites here... Man, these men, that's a good investment. They coming on there, spending that five ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, whatever it costs, free ninety nine for thirty days, and in thirty days make them seventy connections, close the account, and now they got seventy women that they just finna be working on, working on, working on. And if he could get just a thousand a year off of those seventy women, oh yeah, and men could do it because 
It's men that I know personally got 9, 10, 11 baby mamas. So men utilize these 24 hours that God then, then made. Men can utilize these 24 hours. So this is the culture that you're in. This is the culture that you're in. And this is what you have to realize. And, and what you got to understand about this is this is a microwave society. People want love overnight. Look at all the reality shows now. All the reality shows is, and, and, and I just saw a show on, maybe it was on Netflix or something with uh, Nick Lachey where, and his wife where they got the people, they don't see each other. They don't see each other. So that right there is priming you to meet somebody online and try not to see each other. I got, I got two clients right now that I just connected. I know how, how both of them look. So I told them, don't y'all worry about looks. Neither one of y'all ugly. Y'all just get to know each other as people. So I, I do that every now and then with my clients, you know, just so that they can have a different experience that's not based off of looks. And, and don't write me about that because this with my clients, you know, people that do life coaching, okay, and have paid for coaching. And I just have a little network. And so this ain't a professional business. This that I don't charge for that. Okay, they do coaching or some other type of business with me, and I tell them don't worry about how each other look. And it just so many times I I will be getting messages about what do this person look like? What do this person look like? Tell me what this person look like, and that just goes to show we so caught up on that. So now what's happening is, like with this reality show, then what you got the married in 90 days or fiance in 90 days, then you got the married at first sight, you got all of this stuff, and this is programming, okay? That's why it's a television program, because it is programming you so that when you go out here in this dating world, you're doing the same thing. You hopping in the bed, you hopping in a relationship, or you online dating and you trust in everybody that you meet. And so what's happening is men today who are online, Instagram, Facebook, or the dating apps, they meeting so many women at such a rapid rate. It's such a high turnover that men now understand and have a sense of the disparity between the amount of available women and the amount of available men. And that is why you coming up with these men who are spoiled because just every time I think about some of the stuff women do and don't know about dating, it just, it just, you know, it, it hurt me to the heart. But let me tell you this, let me tell you this. It is some loose booty women. You hear me? It is some loose booty women out here that just are so forward and so nasty, so fresh, so managed, so fast, whatever word you want to call it, and just be, whoo, you know, just on a man. Oh, you sexy. What you going to do? I want a piece of you. I remember... When I used to get texts back that like that when I was out in the field, you gonna come <clears throat> me or what? The cuss word. I oh uh, excuse me, okay. Um but it's a lot of women like that and it's growing ever increasingly because you remember how them women in the Bible did their daddy. That same energy. Coming here today. You remember how Rachel and Leah was fussing and fighting, arguing back and forth over who gonna sleep with uh, Jacob, who gonna who gonna get pregnant next by Jacob. And I remember one of them, the son went out and and picked some fruit. I don't know what that fruit was, but to me, I read it as like dates. You know, some dates. You remember the little dates that the people eat. The son went and got some fruit, came back, had the fruit. His auntie said, hey, let me have some of that fruit. And, he, and then his mom was like, hold on, uh -uh, you ain't getting none of my son fruit. And then she was like, please, I just want some of the fruit. 
And then the woman said, this from the Bible now, Rachel and Leah. Yeah, I think I remember the story right. And y'all theologians, yeah, I I'm not asking y'all to come in the comment and tell the whole story and, and I'll post all the scriptures. Okay. Let people go Google this and read it for themselves. I'm not asking for the theologian commentation. Okay, so understand that I don't want to overwork you. So the mama whose son went and got the fruit, she like, hold on. Okay, if you want some of this here fruit, what you gonna do for it? And then the, the other, the auntie was like, all right, your son give me some of that fruit. I'll let you sleep with Jacob tonight. I'm like, if I'm reading this right, I probably read it wrong. I'm like, is he just bargain some of her son fruit and just to tell her sister she could go get her some? Wow, but it's the Hunger Games. You know, hey, that Bible interesting now. It's the Old Testament. I don't know. I, this must be Genesis. It probably was Genesis or, or Exodus 1. But I'm reading this. I'm like, man, there's some real stuff here. And so here you have it. That's what's the same energy today. Women doing that same thing today. It's literally, and I'm not talking about this, um, polyamory, polyamory, polyamorous, um, what's the other thing? I'm not talking about all that, with all the words. I'm talking about the regular relationships where it's a man and a woman, and then the man go to the script club, and then he come back with a bright idea to his woman. Let's have, let, hey, let's have us one more. Let's have us a girlfriend. And then she like, okay, I guess. And then, they come in there and doing the same thing Rachel and Leah was doing. All right, the night your night. All right, the night next night your night. All right, you can live with him at his apartment over there, and I stay at the house that we got with our kids, and and we flop places. This really happening. This is really happening. You hear me? I done coached several situations. This stuff out here really happening, and so what's happening is men are ever increasingly becoming spoiled and so in this microwave society think about the difference now you want microwave food or you want oven food you want I, that's why i say god made love in the oven not in the microwave but today everybody want microwave and don't worry about how it tastes how trashy it is but don't want to take the time to have some oven baked love and so that's the problem that we're facing. So when you're dealing with that, now you're going to be up the creek without a paddle. So now you're going into the world, and it's a lot of men who are spoiled rotten. They come from being spoiled by their mama, their grandma, their auntie, and all their girlfriends to you. So now this how these men today could fix their mouth to say, oh, you could pursue me too. This this 2020, this ain't 1950. You could call first. You could pay for the date. You could uh, pick me up. Men will fix their mouth to say that. And I, just because I said the man say you could pay for the date, y'all going to try to put words in my mouth. I, I know I'm going to have a few. No, I ain't never said that it's okay for a man to suggest that the woman pay. I said to the woman on the first date, you can offer to pay your half, not for the whole date. Now, so let's get that clip. Oh, well, Tony, I am just so confused because so now you just said the man said you could pay for the date. But you actually told us we should pay for the date. I ain't tell you that. OK, let's clear that up. So this is what you got today. You got these four men. So what's going to happen? What, how you get around this? The way you get around this is these men got to realize that you different. Got to realize that you still, if, if he call it old fashioned, old school, so be it. That's what you is. That the man has to lead by courting and pursuing the woman. The man has to approach the woman because remember, when a man approach a woman, that's like a lion on the on the field, in in grazing the land and approaching a lioness. 
when the woman approaches a man, that's like a gazelle approaching a lion. A gazelle is a lion's lunch, okay? A lion is, is the lion's mate. We talk about Mufasa and Simba now. If you've seen Lion King, or oh, it's different between a gazelle and a lioness. When you, as a woman, pro approaching the man and pursuing the man, and you texting him, now, the reason why a lot of this stuff I teach sound like a science sometimes is because I'm a relationship scientist, if there was such a thing. So what I created is the three to one ratio. I don't know which book I put this in. Probably misses right. The three to one ratio when you are dating. And what this means is the man needs to approach you if he doesn't approach you, he either doesn't want you, doesn't like women, or he's taken. Point blank period. Point blank period. Do you hear me? Listen to what I'm telling you. Stop telling yourself, oh, he could just be an introvert. Oh, he could just be shy. No, even shy introverts approach the woman that they want. Trust me, I am a shy introvert. All my life, I've been a shy introvert. I, the reason why I do this, because this is my purpose. But I don't want to do this, don't like doing this. You hear me? And I'm a shy introvert and was an absolute dog. Because that was one thing that I got the courage on. And every man I know, if he got the sweat bullets, if his, if his knees got to wobble, his hands got to tremble, one thing about this here thing is he going to get the courage to approach a woman? Listen to what I'm telling you, okay? So the man got to approach you. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. I get so many questions from women. Well, Tony, I've been in church, and uh, I keep seeing this guy, and we make eye contact. I wonder, should I go up to him and tell him something, say something to him, strike up? No. His, his girlfriend live in another state. He in school, she in school. That's why he keep looking at you and not approaching you. Or, no, he not approaching you because he don't feel it's appropriate to be trying to date in the church because he know he's not ready for nothing serious and he know he'll fall in sin with you, knock you off, and then either you have to be switching churches or he got to be switching churches or y'all just got to be looking at each other like Boo Boo the Fool who shot John and forgot to kill him. So that's why he's not approaching you. Or, no, he's not approaching you because you are not his type. He looks based and he's not interested in your personality because he has a picture in his mind of what his type is and you are not it. It might be another man that you his type, but this man that you looking at, you're not his type. That's why he's not approaching you. So listen to what I'm telling you. When you see this here happening now, uh, let me cut on light in here. When you see this here happening now, listen to me now. Sun going down for some reason. Sun going down. Y'all forgive me. It's good. When you see this here happening, keep on going about your business, okay? The man has to approach you and then understand this. When he approach you, he going to shoot his shot. Don't worry about how he shoot the shot, okay? As long as he don't come up and touch you, don't worry about what come out of his mouth because that's the hardest thing in the world to do. And if you had to do that every day of your life, looking for your mate, you'll understand. So he might come up and, did it hurt? And you're like, huh? Did it hurt? What? You, what? what are you talking about? Did what hurt, sir? Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? And you, <laughs> Really? Don't worry about what he say, okay? Just catch that line. Whatever the line is, could be terrible. Just catch the line, okay? The fact that he had the courage to come up to you. If you single, ready, and available, and he looked halfway decent to you, he in your type, you could stomach the look at him, then, and you open, and you don't know how and when God gonna send your man, then it's okay to give him your phone number. When you give him your phone number, this is the other thing that women do wrong. Never take a man's phone number. He came up and gave me his phone number. Men do that. That is also out of fear. That's also out of fear. Now, I know you're going to tell yourself right now, 
Oh, well, the reason why I take their phone in because I don't want to have my phone in because what if I don't want them to call me? If you don't want them to call you, then don't give them your phone number. Just tell them no thank you. Now, no thank you. Or you could tell him you got a boyfriend. Because right now, if he's not the one, then you're dating Jesus. So you're not lying if you got a boyfriend, okay? Because you and Jesus ain't doing nothing. Y'all ain't in fornication. So you ain't lying. You Your eyes focus on the Lord. So because a young lady lost her life turning down a man. And he got mad and took her life. And y'all have seen that happen. It Typically, it doesn't go that far. Usually, it's he curse her out. Oh, yo, stinking such and such. You ain't all that. B, you ain't all that. Yo, that's why I don't, can't stand y'all now. That's why you're single. That's why nobody wants you. That's why your man cheating on you now. And so that's typically what you're going to have to deal with. But so, but when you say you got a boyfriend, that's that says something different to a man. Because now I say... Okay, her boyfriend could be standing right over there. Her boyfriend could be sitting in the car. So let me just chill out before I get swung on, before I get shot. But when you just flat out turn him down, then that's when, if he happens to be a crazy person, that's when you just trigger his crazy. Because people have triggers. You just, that was one of his triggers. When if you would have said, I got a boyfriend, that's in a diff that helps de-escalate a crazy man. And when I say crazy, I'm talking the literal sense of, ca of crazy. I'm I'm talking the literal sense, okay? Not the play play sense. So understand this. You give him your phone number. And some people and I was like, you get if if you're in a dating field and you're gonna be giving out your number at a high clip, then get your little back phone. And people like, oh, you get a Google voice. A Google voice still rang to your phone. So if you have if you're gonna be dating and you can give me your number out. And whether it's online dating or in-person dating, get your little second phone. That don't cost you nothing. Metro, Cricket, $40 a month or less, $9.99. Second line, $9.99. So this, do you know this my dating phone? This my dating phone. This the number that I could leave this phone at home. I leave this in the glove compartment at my, in my desk at work. And if you graduate from this phone, now you could get to this phone. And the reason why I say this is because... If you got the opportunity, if you the type of woman that is men approaching you, then you got to take advantage of that in the sense of meeting more men, talking to more men. But you might not want all of them on your main line. To be honest with you, that's why all the NBA and the NFL players, a lot of them dogs and, and, and doing their thing. But that's why they have two, three phones. Some of them ain't got nothing to do with dogs. I'll take that back and reel that back in. But a lot of them have two phones simply because one is for associates and colleagues and an old high school friend and one is for agent family they woman they wife you know they cheering and so you split that up you are a business you are entity they ain't got two phones just because they rich got two phone because got to manage their time and in some and a lot of the, the pro athletes then gave me two three numbers and and i'm like well which one you want me to call you on man Come on now. I got one, two, three in my phone. Then I got to put main. Then I got to put new. Then I got to put new, new. All these different numbers you keep giving me, man. And now y'all know I'm a life coach for a pro athlete. That's why I'm, I ain't. It's because somebody mine to be the went there. Oh, you dating athlete? No. I coach athletes. So this is where I learned this from. And I'm about to get me a second phone. I just got me one phone. I'm about to get me a second phone because I need to I need to start separating, you know, associates and all this, and just have a phone that see right now when I'm talking to you on my phone, this my phone, this my one phone. So if my wife need to reach me, she can't even reach me right now because it's on do not disturb. So I'm gonna get me a second phone. You, you understand the points of a second phone? So if it's an emergency, she could call this phone, and it's only three, four, five people have that number. You hear what I'm telling you? So that's what you're going to do if you single and you dating. You need to do that. You see the commercials all the time. Second line, $9.99. $9.99 ain't going to kill you. And then once this man here graduate from the back phone to the main line, now he could call Jesus on the main line and call you on your main line and y'all could start the bill. Y'all could start the court. You hear what I'm telling you? And this is what he has to do. The man need to get your number 
and he need to contact you within 24 hours if he is serious he gonna contact you within 24 hours it might be exactly 24 hours it, it definitely it got to be within 48 hours that's just that's just being nice but if he's serious when a man serious by something he gonna contact you within 24 hours and then if he's serious about you and he really looking and you look like you you check all the looks off you look like his wife now he want to get to know you to see if you look like his wife on the inside you hear me on the inside and so he's gonna be very assertive he's gonna be respectful but he's gonna be intentional and he's gonna contact you within 24 hours and then he's gonna contact you every day and the reason why I said a three to one, remember I mentioned the three to one, and I know you over there rolling your eyes, Tony, when you get to the three and one, you done said three and one, what does that mean? The three to one, you know what a ratio is? Three to one. This means three contacts from him to your one. This is a three to one ratio. Does not have to be exact, but it need to be exact. You get what I'm telling you? Don't, don't say, don't get down to one to one, two to one, at the worst, it, it, it could get worse four to one five to one but it don't need to go less than three to one what this means is he called you on monday he called you on tuesday he called you on wednesday on thursday you could beat him to the punch hey how are you back to friday he might be waiting on you because he thinking Thursday was a trend. He thinking Thursday, oh, this son new here. What's she? Okay, she done hit me up. Okay. Hey, yeah, what's going on with your baby? Hey, yeah, how you doing? So Friday, he might want to get in his comfort zone. The grown boy might be welling up in him and he like, oh, I'm going to let her hit me again. I got on the hook. Now she like me. Now she want me. And then he sitting there Friday and he like, Okay, when my phone gonna ring? Okay, let me check, make sure I ain't miss something. Okay, let me call my mama. Hey, mama, I'm a, hey, call my phone right back. Let me see if it rang. All right. Oh, yeah, it rang. Hello? All right, mama. Hey, thank you. I'll talk to you a little later. And so now he checking because he wondering, okay, she hit me up on Thursday. What, what, what going on? So then he gonna hit you. He gonna hit you. Hey, how you doing? He, he, he like you. He trying to get to know you. Now, he's not going to hit you with no attitude or nothing like that if he like you. And then he's going to hit you on Friday. And he going to say, oh, okay, yesterday was a little fluke. Then, you know, she that's just what she on. Hit you Saturday. Hit you Sunday. On Monday. Now, see what I'm saying? You ain't got to keep up with this. Now, listen. Because I... One thing I learned about women, y'all take stuff literal. You'll have a calendar. Okay, he done checked on Monday. Okay, let me have the Tuesday. Okay, let me hit him Thursday. Okay, boom. I just, you'll get in the flow of it. You'll get in the flow of it. Let it be natural. Just make sure you ain't hitting him if he's not hitting you. That's what I mean by this. But let him set a little trend. Let him hit you. Let him pursue you so that you know he's into you. And then what you're doing is you're just sprinkling a little reciprocation of the contact every now and then so that then he knows that you also interested in him. So listen, I got to get going. Um, I'm on my team coming up here, getting ready for the event tonight. I, I I got to go teach tonight three hours at the single workshop in Atlanta. I I bring one back, and no, I'm not taking no other cities just because you know it, this. I'm losing money. I'm paying them to be there tonight, basically. But I just do this just to connect with certain people. You know, small group of people and people who really serious about their growth and I try to do that you know as a teacher make sure that you click the link in the description mymentor.life book a session with your coach with your new coach or become a coach on there y'all know I'm gonna keep telling y'all about that because I need everybody to get on this mental health bandwagon and really work on yourself and grow and you could try a different coach each week or each month whatever your budget allows until you find your fit and then just rock with them and you might do four sessions straight then you might do one a month then you might take a few months off and check in every now and then but you need to have somebody that's holding you accountable 
My fee is not always affordable if you're in a season of budgeting, um, but it has to, I, you know, my mine has to be higher just due to the amount of work I got to do and the limited time that I have and the amount of demand that, that's coming at me. I got to separate to figure out who's serious because sometimes if somebody watching you online or something like that, they just get on the phone and just really want to meet you. They ain't have nothing they want to talk about. So that's why my fee, you'll notice my fee is higher than average. So um, listen back through this if you didn't get it. If you say, Tony, I need an hour-long video, listen to this twice then. Listen to this twice. And here go your takeaways. Never, ever, ever, never, ever pursue a man. Never pursue a man under any circumstances. Never pursue a man. I don't care if he a double amputee. He still can roll that chair to you. Never pursue a man, okay? And never be calling no man. Leading in the conversation. Calling him all the time. Let him call you. If he got a problem with it, that's not your husband. Because your husband, y'all got to remember, Jacob worked 14 to 20 years for his wives, okay? We only get one in this day and time under under the new changes of the New Testament. We only get one wife. And so if a man could work seven years in a hot sun just to get him a wife, these men could get on a smartphone and dial your number. Ain't even got to dial your number. Just hit your name in the contacts. Come on now. That ain't asking. That's not asking too much. And if old sorry man don't want to do that, give him a, a broom and, and sweep his butt right on out your life. Listen to what I'm telling you. Do not break that rule and go to pursuing and chasing a man and shooting your shot. That's not how a man is wired. A man is wired to chase, to go after, to pursue. And when he's telling you to pursue him, that's because he want to put you in a position of boo-boo the fool. He want to put you in old castmate role, uh, extra. He wants you to be an extra. And he going to use that desperation against you. And how you giving him money, how you paying for dates, the whole date he ain't paying nothing. How he going to be living off of you, going to be cheating on you because he know you desperate and you thirsty and you lonely and you hungry and you'll do anything to have you a man. And that's why you so ready and willing to go against your nature and also to avert his nature and go to pursuing and chasing him. And, and so many women get it wrong and they say, well, I'm going to pursue him. Well, I'll shoot my shot. I don't mind walking up to a man. If I see what I like and I like what I like, I ain't going to let it pass me. Guess what? That's your problem because what you like don't like you. And everything that you want ain't good for you. So if he don't want you, then let him keep going. Just because you like him don't mean he wants you. And if he wants you, he will come and get you. Believe that. That's every man. You hear me? That's four, five-year-old boy. They will go get what they want. Trust me when I'm telling you this. And so don't go into that role because that's your desperation. That's your thirst. That's your, that's your unhealed pain and trauma and stuff from your past that make you so thirsty and desperate that you're going to go shoot your shot at this man just because he looked good to you. And you tired of being single. Mm -mm. That ain't the will of God. That is not the will of God. That is not the way God created a man. He created him to come to you. So understand that. And if that poses any questions that come up from this video, put it in the comments. I might see it. And this question I'm answering today, I just saw it yesterday. So that's how I, that's how I work. I ain't got all these, you know, planned out and say I'm gonna talk about this that day. I try to be in the moment and flow and be fluid with you so that what I'm talking about is on topic, something that's relevant that you need in this moment. So don't be afraid to post your questions in the comments. If I don't get to it, that just means I can't speak to it. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. God bless you. For those of y'all who come into the singles workshop tonight, I'll see you there. Uh, let me know if you're a member of the Blessed Tribe when you get there. And tomorrow, the Life Coach Certification. And then Sunday, I'm in Orlando. If you're near Orlando, self-love workshop. I'm not the only speaker. I'm just doing a little keynote, 45 minutes to an hour. And so you can go to my website, TonyGaskins.com forward slash events and get your tickets for Sunday because I think it's a few left on that one. 
Hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.